Good afternoon. I'm Laura Zervis and I'm a registered dietitian and licensed nutritionist and I'm happy to be here today to present um, the nutritional content for Lending Hearts. Uh, today I'm very excited to talk about cooking on a budget and it's something that um, is near to me because um, I started out my training in chef school and culinary school and there's one thing that chefs are really good at and that is um, using foods to you know making them go further you know You know, that's why you see your daily specials, um, utilization of leftovers, um, utilization of a whole product, buying um, foods in season, and all of those things are very helpful. Oh, hi, Deborah. Um, so yeah, we're just talking today about the, you know, cooking on a budget and, um, you know, why is that important and why have we seen a difference? Well, because um, right now about 50% of Americans or excuse me, not 50% of Americans. Americans are spending about 50% of their food dollars on food that's purchased outside of the home. Um, so um, there's a lot of people using their money for, um, you know, and most of that is on fast food as well. And compar in comparison, in 1976, that number was only 25% of the food was, 25% um, of our food dollars were spent outside the home. So that's a big statistic. And the problem is when we eat outside the home, there is, um, you know, there 20% more of the calorie, you're getting 20% higher calories. So your calories could be up by 200 calories. They're higher in fat, sodium, saturated fat, and often sugar. So that is the price we pay. And unfortunately, you know, we're always encouraged to supersize a meal to get more, you know, no matter where you go, would you like to do something for just 50 cents more? And that 50 cents more can sometimes translate into 400 extra calories. Mm -hmm. So um, it's important to, you know, try to make as many of our meals as home, not to say that you still can't go out and enjoy a good meal, um, but that you're, um, that you, I'm sorry, there was a little bit of a noise coming from here. Um, not to say that you can't go out, but you should try to have those Monday through Friday or those regular routine meals at home. Uh, the way that we could, there's three ways that we could stay on a cooking budget and watch our food dollars. The biggest and the most important one is meal planning. And that's, I really love talking about meal planning a lot. And um, the, like we said about watching our food dollars. And if we meal plan, then we have better control of the ingredients. Many people get stuck in there on a nine meal rut where they make the same nine meals over and over. Um, you know, and they'll, some people say, well, my family, you know, a lot of, you know, maybe smaller children don't like something. Well, children could take up to seven times to try a food before they decide if they like it or not. So keep trying those foods. You may want to introduce a new food, you know, one time a week. Um, I would say you'd be hard pressed to, I would, I always discourage people from trying um, like a meal plan where they see seven new meals in a one week period, because it's just, um, it's just too much to do. So I'm gonna share my screen with you in a little bit here. Um, the first thing I like to do with meal planning is to sit down with your family and make a big list of all the foods that you like to eat. So let me share my screen with you. Um, This is the first one. So you could do this at home, um, but you might want to say, okay, let's list all the beef items that we eat. Stuffed peppers, chili, meatloaf, roast beef, beefs, anything, anything that everybody likes. You know, if there's something that somebody doesn't like, you know, maybe some people in your family like it, some people don't, just put a little asterisk next to it. Maybe that's something you could have when that person has an activity or, or you know, when they have a leftover or something else that they could eat. Um, but you could see here, just, you know, and this list can be so long. It, it's just, you know, just think of all the different ways that you could prepare, you know, a round steak, whether if it's stew, a pepper steak, you know, a, a thicker kind of um, the chunky chili that has the, the big pieces of meat in it. All the, um, you know, even some soups can fall under here as well. Chicken, all the different ways that you could pre um, prepare chicken, all the different ways that you could prepare different cuts of chicken. Um, and then, you know, roast, piccata, marsala, parma, anything that you could do. And then even getting into the turkey burgers, uh, roast turkey breast, um, turkey chili, all of the things that we could do with that. Um, fish and shellfish, just think about all the different types of fish and shellfish are out there. And you'll see this sometimes at restaurants, they might have, um, 
uh, several different options for fish. And then you'll see after that, you know, you could select the way that you would like them prepared. And so you might want to do that at home too. Okay. How many different ways can we have cod? Well, so we could bake it, we could broil it, we could make fish tacos out of it. Salmon, what can we do with salmon? We could grill it, broil it, you could grill it in a um, parchment paper, you could put it outside on the grill, you could make salmon patties. Um, you know, the same, you could go through the same through all of these um, fish. Pork, the same thing, pork chops, broiled, baked, grilled, pulled pork, pork stir fry, um, pork kebabs, you know, numerous things that we could do with pork. Maybe even some vegetarian, everybody's gonna have a, a different list here for the vegetarian. Um, and let me get another list here for us. Am I the only person on this call? I think you are. <laughs> I think you are. So feel free wow, to ask any questions. Okay. You're fine. And again, you know, pasta dishes, all the different main dish um, pasta dishes you could make. The main entree salads. Um, those are real popular right now. All the bowls that we've done in, in some of the previous classes. Sandwiches. Um, this fun, first one is one of my favorites. I found a recipe for this a while ago. Grown up grilled cheese. It's with an olive tamponade and um, grayer cheese and a multi-grain bread. So um, it's just a little adult take on the grilled cheese sandwich. The Rachel, the Reuben, Turkey Devonshire, after you have turkey leftovers, any type of panini, tuna melt. I mean, the, it's endless. Just think of all the sandwiches that you see when you go out. And then of course, breakfast for dinner, You know, sometimes that goes over really well too. So if you just sit down with your family, come up with your own list and just, you know, you could see we probably have at least 10 items under each type of meal. So there's a really good chance to get some variety in there. Mm -hmm. So after we think of all of our main entrees, we wanna look at our vegetables and our starches. So, you know, and I'm sure there's some that I've missed here, but just go through the non-starchy ones like broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, beets, all of the ones that are acceptable to your family. And then make a list of the starchy vegetables, um, peas, corn, lima beans, um, some of the squash family. And then just starch, pasta, rice, couscous, quinoa, barley, um, farro, sweet potatoes, redskins, fingerlings, all of the different choices that you have here. And then once you do that, then you could start doing some meal building. So when you do, when you meal, build a meal, you want to first look at your entree and you want to add possibly a starch and a veg to it. So first, before we could do that, we think about the principles of good meal planning. And the principles are good meal planning of, yes, it should be varied in nutrition. It should be very nutritious. It should have some carb, protein, and some healthy fats in there. Um, but also it should be varied in texture, flavor, taste, and cooking method. And I'll just give you a few examples of some poor ones. And you'd say, well, I've never seen that before. It's because it's so poor, right? <laughs> so, but if you could imagine, um, you know, if somebody put a plate in front of you of baked cod, mashed potatoes, and steamed cauliflower, you would never see that. It's all white. It's all mushy. There's, it's all, blah, you know, so there's, there's no very, um, they're all good alone or, or with other partners, but together they really don't cut it. Um, and the same with um, maybe meatballs, Brussels sprouts, and little red skin baby potatoes. You know, could you use all these little balls on your plate? I mean, nobody would ever serve anything so silly. So, um, and then another one, I think a, a regional dish, uh, all the fish fries that we have locally here, you know, it'll be fried fish, French fries. Sometimes there's a side of a fried vegetable and you look at your plate and it's all this fried food and it's just like, not good, right? There's no, um, you know, sometimes you'll see like a different option. You'll see the baked fish there. Sometimes they're, they're improving. They might have a side of vegetables, but just something to keep in mind. Um, so anyhow, um, whenever you're building the meals, think about those entrees. And whenever you're looking at a week's worth of um, menus, you would say to yourself, okay, what are my personal goals? You know, am I on the Mediterranean diet? Do I want to have fish twice this week? Uh, Am I only limiting my red meat to once a week or, or maybe once every two weeks? Um, do I want to be meatless like meatless Mondays or do I want to, is there a special day that I'm, you know, want to um, not have any carb or, or whatever your personal goals are. So 
Um, after you do that, I would select your five entrees. And when you do that, then you could go ahead and pair up a vegetable and a starch with it. So let's just look at some of the ones here that we have made. Um, let's see. So this is one, um, and then we're going to plot them on the calendar. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I don't have these on a separate, but something might be nice like a roast garlic, um, a roast chicken, garlic mashed potatoes, green beans, and a tossed salad. So you could see, does it meet everything? Yeah, sure. And you could just imagine on your plate, you have the, the mashed potatoes, um, you know, a little bit of, um, a little bit of height in there. You have your roast chicken, green beans, looks very nice. Um, and then Tuesday, you have um, beef tacos, lettuce, tomatoes, onions, avocado, Spanish rice. So you have a lot of different um, things going on there. You definitely have your vegetable, you have your starch in your um, taco shell, um, and you have a nice protein there. Um, Wednesday, broiled salmon, uh, red skins, potatoes, asparagus, and a spinach salad. So that's also very colorful. You could see all the different heights on your plate, textures, cooking methods. Um, Thursday, turkey burgers, a multi-grain bun, broccoli, and a salad. So even if you're having a turkey burger, um, and that's sometimes people get in the habit too, when they're having a sandwich, maybe they don't go all the way out to, to do the vegetable and everything, but that's really important. Um, and then Fridays are meatless day, fettuccines with, um, fettuccine with mushrooms and hazelnuts, roast carrots, and an arugula beet salad. So a lot of um, different colors, and then if you look as far as the week goes, we have one chicken, another poultry, one beef, one fish, and one vegetarian. So you have a, a nice variety. That's what was important to this person that they had a, you know, a little bit of variety throughout the week, not too heavy in red meat. Um, and it, it's important to have this plan because like I said, with the, you don't want to get in a situation, this person has soccer practice on Tuesdays and school conferences on this day. You don't want, take out to take over. You want to make sure that you have a plan. And if you know this day, oh, maybe I'll just prep the taco meat or take the, the taco meat out of the refrigerator. Um, those kind of things are helpful. Out of the freezer, I mean to say. And I was just working with somebody recently on some meal planning and they were uh, the victim of a lot of takeout. So we were trying to sit down they said, well, we order from this meal delivery service. I think it's um, a local one around here. And they had a lot of stuff in their freezer. I'm like, well, you may want to go to your freezer and do a little shopping there and decide at nighttime, you know, what kind of things can we have this week that we could just right have out of our, our freezer. So um, you want to think about your personal goals. And then you want to think about things that are in season too. Um, because when things are in season, they're at peak freshness. They're usually a reasonable cost. And, um, you know, some things, if they're in peak season, like, let's say, for example, the spring, the things that are in spring, like asparagus, strawberries, strawberries can be frozen for later if you buy a lot of extra ones, they can be put in smoothies or some types of desserts. Um, so you have a lot of options when you buy something um, fresh like that. Um, let's see. So another thing that we wanted to just touch base on is, you know, we're always trying to make sure that we have that five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. So you know, it's one thing to write, and that's why I like doing it this way, you know, to have those big lists of all the different foods, because um, sometimes people will just write out, oh, I'm gonna, I know I'm going to have chicken on Monday, tacos on Tuesday, salmon Wednesday, turkey burgers, and they forget about the vegetables. And um, sometimes we get in that habit Two, we'll go to the store and we're in that produce section, which is always like the first section of the store, right? And it's always so beautiful. And sometimes we get into the habit, oh, this, the broccoli looks good. The cauliflower looks good. Oh, wow, the cauliflower's, the cauliflower's out or the eggplant looks good. And we don't have a plan for those things. And when we don't have a plan, sometimes they go bad in the, our, our refrigerator, you know, because it's like we bought them, but we didn't have a plan for them. And the other thing is too, when you make your list and you have the, the different entrees and then you put your vegetables with them, that's another way to make sure because if you have them on your, your list, then they get in your cart and then they make it to your table. And that's really important because you don't wanna forget about them because that's another thing that's going to really ruin the budget is when you throw something away. Um, and you know, Americans are, you know, they say that um, we have so much, that, you know, so many people have so much in their refrigerator, some people don't, and there is a lot of waste. 
Um, so after you make your calendar, and if you found out that that really worked for you, I would save that and, you know, make another calendar for the next week, another calendar of menus, another week's worth of menus. And that way, you know, if it really works then you could use it again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel because the next part of that is you create your shopping list. So let's get our shopping list here. So when we go through everything that we did on that other menu, the, the different, um, we had ground beef from the tacos, a roasting chicken, we had salmon, turkey breast, and fettuccine. So we just know, need to get those things, the buns, the taco shells, the hazelnuts. This were all the vegetables. So you could see our list is a little bit heavy in vegetables, um, just a few things of protein, which is all we need. And then we're gonna check our pantry to see if we have the, the pasta, the rice, the potatoes, milk, eggs, butter. And then of course, you're gonna have some other things, but this is a pretty slimmed down list for like, it was a really nice menu and we had a lot of variety. And this is actually a, a nice small list. And when you stick to the list, that's a really good way to save money as well. Um, so just another thing that you could do. Uh, let's see here versus throwing random things into the cart. Let me just put this up here. So um, just wanted to talk about the vegetables and we talked about using that again, seasonal foods. Oh, and then I wanted to also touch about, you know, some things that could be frozen that we might not necessarily think of. Um, you know, avocados, once they, um, come into season in May, I believe the California avocados come in and, you know, they have a very short window. So once you get one and you press it and it's just a little bit tender at the store, rather, you know that you could bring it home and you could put it in the refrigerator because it's already at that peak ripeness. If it's still a little bit hard, you could set it on your windowsill. Um, but also if you know that they're ripe and you're not going to have a chance to use them, you could always um, scoop it out, sprinkle some lemon juice on it and put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it. Um, that's one thing you could do, or you could leave it whole, um, cut it in half and just sprinkle lemon juice and leave the other half in the shell and freeze it. Both methods work really well. And you could just, I like to do the mashed way because then it comes out, it's ready to use for guacamole or avocado toast or anything that you're going to do there. Um, so in the spring, we have asparagus, red peppers, strawberries, avocado. In the fall, you think about um, some of the fruits like honeydew, apple, and our root vegetables. And that's something to think about too. Like after Thanksgiving, sometimes you'll see like the yams and the sweet potatoes and the cranberries have all gone on sale. And the yams and the sweet potatoes, they will stay in a cool, dry place for quite some time. Um, but the cranberries, they could be, you could either freeze them in the bag like they are, you could wash them and freeze them. You could use them later for like cranberry muffins in your baking or in your salad, you could always dry them. So just like trying to take advantage of those sales um, is, is really good. And then in the fall, of course, we have our citrus fruits. Um, and then the other thing is some of the choices that we make in the store. Um, and you'll see that um, I have a few things here um, usually when it comes to vegetables, you know, fresh is the most nutritious followed by frozen and then canned. Um, but sometimes you'll, you'll have to do the price check. I, I've noticed too, even when it's like beans, everybody thinks, you know, sometimes these beans are cheaper than these beans, but you really have to watch. Sometimes they'll be on sale and sometimes the can is actually cheaper. Both have really good nutritional value. These ones are a little bit, and you think about it too, whenever, unfortunately, whenever we want to save money, it might be we're sacrificing a little bit of convenience too. Like the more somebody has handled it, the more, the, the more processing that it gets to take to this stage um, obviously adds some cost. So if you can um, notice, um, sometimes they're both close to a pound. You could see that, you know, this might be a good option for you if it's on sale. And I'm, I, I do like store brands. Um, and I think this is a quality store brand, um, but experiment. I mean, not all store brands are created equal. And, um, but these, you know, these are very good. Um, the bean family, beans, lentils, rice, peas. Um, they're not rice, but the beans, lentils, and um the lima beans, all an excellent source of protein, all an excellent source of iron, all very low cost. 
Some of these are less than a dollar a bag. Um, and I have seen these where they're just over a little bit over a dollar a can. And these are the organic ones too. So very nice products. Um, also, I use black beans. Sometimes I use cans, sometimes I use these again. It's just for convenience. But you, if you watch the price, sometimes you'll be um, amazed at the different prices. Um, another high protein um, uh, thing that I like to use that is a really good value is canned salmon. Um, wild, because I like, I like wild. And this one is actually a store brand that I think is really quality product. There's a couple of brands in the grocery store that when you open up the salmon, there's a lot of um, skin bones in there. And it's a lot of work actually to, to get um, to get this actual meat that you want. But this is a really quality product and I'm gonna put a, a recipe on there for salmon patties because this is wild salmon, um, still a really good source of omega-3s, um, a really good product, probably half of the price that you would pay for a um, salmon filet. Now it's a different product. You know, you can eat it right out of the can. You can put it on your salad, you can season it up, but it's not like you could have a filet out of it like you would um, the regular salmon, but if you're looking for nutritional value, it's an excellent product. And this is good until um, 2025. So it's something nice to have around if you do need a quick meal, um, you know, especially salmon patties. Um, usually I have those ingredients on hand, um, green pepper, onion, and breadcrumbs and some eggs, and you have a nice meal that everybody likes. And it's a nice alternative to um, budget wise compared to a crab cake. So, and you'll get that same nice flavor. Um, also, I think a good value too are these uh, the tuna packs that they make. And I have priced um, last week, they have a larger packet of this too. These ones are a little, they're about, it says 2.6 ounces and they have one that's exactly double than this. And you have to be careful. Sometimes you think, oh, the bigger one is gonna be cheaper, but you really can't tell until you do the, the ounce per price, um, the ounce, the cost per ounce serving the cost per ounce price, excuse me. So um, I always try to figure that out. I always have my phone before there were phones like that. I used to have my calculator. Um, something I noticed this past week when I was at the store, um, there were two items. One was um, Greek yogurt and the small one, the, actually the large one was on sale, but when you divided it and you got the cost per ounce, the smaller one was still the better value. So, and the same, I think for, um, the aerosol whipped cream and there was something else. So the bigger one really wasn't worth it with, with the price. So, and then the other thing that I like to do too um, while on a budget is avoid the single serve um, portions. I like to buy the um, large portion and then I just put them in Ziploc bags, small ones. I like these little snack size ones. They're real small and it's, um, you could just weigh out like the ounce portions um, versus just eating them straight out of the bag. And, um, but they are much lower than, than just trying to buy the snack size one. That snack size one is very expensive. Um, for bought brands, I do like, you know, long grain rice is long grain rice is long grain rice. You know, most rice is created equal. So um, I do like the brown rice. This store brand is very good. It's also organic. It goes on sale often too. Um, and then I also like their, um, the spaghetti products that they make too. And that's that's personal preference. You may like some other ones, but generally speaking, those are low cost items that can really go a long way to feed your family. Um, so that's far as the starch and meats. I think it's a great idea to um, buy um, your own packages of ground meat and make your own um, hamburger patties. Um, you could even mix it up. You could, if you have the grinder and if you have the time, you could always make, um, you know, mix brisket in with beef, uh, two different types of beef, two different fat contents of beef and make your own burgers, much less expensive than um, buying just the pre-made burgers. I saw a national brand, um, one from, you know, there's a TV show about this um, brand of hamburgers and they were, I think they were, <laughs> They were close to $12 a pound. And I, I think that's really, but they were pre-made patties. And I just think that's really expensive. And I think you could do it um, so much better on your own. And you know what the ingredients are as well. But that's something to think about. And as far as chicken, you know, again, just like our bean example, the more processed it is, the, the more expensive it's going to be. So if you are able to cut your whole chicken, um, first of all, if you could roast your own chicken, um, that's always a great idea versus the rotisserie one. 
but I encourage you to check the price of that rotisserie chicken because it may, there's sometimes when it goes on sale and it's almost cheaper to buy the rotisserie chicken to buy a whole chicken. So I've seen that happen a few times. And I probably, I guess the, one of the big takeaways I would say is to know your prices. That's probably the, the biggest thing is know your prices, um, compare, don't be afraid, make sure you save enough time to actually walk around in the store to go back and see, you know, wait, what was the price on that rotisserie chicken? But anyhow, you will pay more for a boneless, skinless chicken breast than what you would from either a half, a whole chicken, half chicken, um, just chicken breast with the bone on and the skin on. And then, you know, as we keep getting more processed, of course, the price goes up and we pay for that convenience. If you need that convenience, that's fine. If you're looking to save some money, you may want to buy, you know, the half chicken and just cut it up or, you know, the whole chicken as well. Um, that's always a good option. And, you know, the same with, um, like they have that too with thighs. And even just lately, the price of everything has gone up, but even the chicken wings have gone up as well. Um, that used to be something that you could get um, that was really inexpensive, but now they have risen as well, along with, um, you know, labor shortages and labor costs. So do you have any questions, Deb? No, I was just um, thinking about how true that is with the more processed things are the... Yes the higher the price, but, um, I, we eat a lot of chicken and we like white meat. And so I tend to stock up when boneless, skinless chicken breasts are on sale. Yes. And I always have to have it in the freezer because it's, you know, kind of a go-to thing, but I will also say, I agree with you when the rotisserie chickens are on sale. I mean, they're delicious. They're ready to go. Right. You can just have it like that, or you can, you know, um, skin it and debone it and have it sort of shredded, you know, for different yes. recipes. And right. um, yeah, that's another great option. Yeah, I really, I agree with you. Um, and, you know, it's funny because that rotisserie chicken is a good price point. And now they're starting to make a lot of um, prepared meals when you first come the store that I shop in has a lot of prepared meals when you first walk in and it might be chicken, mashed potatoes, green beans. And I've seen those are pretty pricey. And you think about those ingredients and it is just, it's really crazy. Um, you know, you're really just paying for that convenience. Um, so it is good to, I, to know, you know, like what you're saying about buying it in um, when it goes on sale, that's good that you know what that price should be, you know, how mm. much should a pound of boneless, skinless breast be? And when they go on sale, that's a good time to scoop it up. And I do the same thing. I put them in the freezer and that's why it helps to do the meal planning. So I know right. like on Sunday, cause it seems like they take forever that huge, you know, I buy one that's uh, a couple packs together. Um, so I know if I'm going to have it on Tuesday, maybe I need to take it out Sunday night so I could work with it, you know, to avoid, you know, so I could just, whenever I'm ready to make it, it could just go. I don't have to stick it in the microwave to defrost it or anything. Right. Um, and, you know, the other thing that I want to talk about was fish. I touched on that salmon briefly. It, you have to know your prices too. And it's a good idea to um, you get to know the people behind the counter and, and they see you often and you ask them, you know, I, I just had this question. I just asked this question at my grocery store probably two weeks ago. Um, there was one red snapper left and I said, is this fresh? And he's like, no. <laughs> so I'm like, thank you for telling me because it was going to cost me probably 15 or $16 and it was going to feed my whole family. But um, yeah, I'm like, thank you for telling me um, because you don't know. You could, you could look at it. You could look to see if the eyes are, you know, if they're sunken in, obviously if it has a smell, it's bad. But, you know, from on my side of the counter, you really can't tell. So I appreciate that honesty. Um, but again, knowing those prices, and again, that's another one, you know, sometimes they'll take out all of the fish on a certain day after it's been out in that one counter, and then it goes over to be frozen and, you know, wrapped and frozen. And sometimes that one might be less expensive or more expensive. You know, it, it's just really mm -hmm. funny. Um, I, there's another something that I just noticed too, and it's, um, it's a convenience product. It's the iced tea that comes in a, um, 64 ounce container, so I guess two quarts. And they have it in the refrigerated section. Um, I believe it was, the price has just come down. It was two for five. They have the same product 
um, it might, I think there's five ounces more. It's a different shaped bottle. It's shelf stable. It's the same brand. It's so funny to me. Um, and it's, it's less money. It's 225. So for a while, I was always buying the one that was on the shelf. It was the same product. You were getting more for less money. But I think the grocery store finally caught on and that's changed now. But um, <laughs> that was one thing I noticed. I'm like, am I the only one that notices this? Um, but anyhow. You do so, have to know your prices. I mean, you do. If, if you don't, you're doing it. Yeah. I know. Because sometimes, you know, there are stores that will put things on sale and you think just because it's on sale, it must be a great price, but it's still way more than another store you exactly. know, or a different brand. Exactly. And it does pay to be a loyalty member for some of these places. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Whole Foods is a good example with that, with that prime app that they have. I like to buy a certain Greek yogurt and it is always expensive at Target, at Giant Eagle. Um, and theirs is always a very good price. And if you use that app, I, I swear it's half the price as it is for the other two. And you would think Whole Foods is going to be expensive. But if you watch, um, now I remember when I was a kid and my grandparents, I'd be over my grandparents for the weekend, we would go to maybe four different grocery stores <laughs> to get like something here that was on sale, something's here that's on sale. I don't always have the time to do that. Um, so I'm usually a one-stop shopper, but there are some things that I might stop at Whole Foods for or a different store or even Target. Um, and I, like I said about store brands, I think most of them are pretty good. You have to try them and see if you like them. One that right. um, I noticed that the, um, the Target brand and the Giant Eagle brand of almond milk is very good. It has the same nutrition profile um, as, as the name brands, as um, Diamond or Silk or whatever they called. Um, I think it is Diamond and Silk brand. Um, but they have the same nutritional content, but I noticed a big, um, a warehouse um, club brand of almond milk had one fourth of the calcium that the other ones do. So you really have to read the labels yeah. on the store. I was very surprised. Um, I actually bought it without looking and I usually look at every single label. Um, and um, I must've been in a hurry and I got it home. I'm like, oh my goodness, this hardly has any calcium in it. So um, you have to really watch. Most of them though, I think are pretty good. Um, so we talked about some of the beans and the peas, the dairy products, um, you know, fats and oils. Again, some of the store brands are good, but if you like a, a certain taste of olive oil, butter seems to be um, pretty consistent um, since it's a standard. Um, but that's something that freezes nicely too. And that, that has really gone up in price um, as well. So, let's... yeah. You know, one thing that um, I'm trying to introduce more at, at our meal times is fish. Yes. Um, just, you know, from the health aspects, obviously. Um, and every time we have it, I say to my husband, why don't we make fish more? Because it's like the easiest thing to cook ever. It is. It's fast, you know, and all of that. But I just don't feel like I have many recipes to sort of change it up. Okay. You know? I mean, salmon, of course, that's simple. You can bake it, you can grill it. And, and we do all that. But, you know, we haven't really branched out with other kinds of fish because I don't know how to cook them. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. What, um, is there certain kinds that you like when you go to a restaurant? We um, flounder grouper. Oh, okay. Pod, you know, yeah, we're kind of all over the map with it. Okay, um, I bet I just don't know how to cook them. So right, and I think they're all pretty, especially the ones that you named. I think are all pretty easy and can be done simply. You know what I mean? Like you're talking grilled, baked, broiled. Um, a couple things to remember with fish too is. Um, always make sure that, you know, whenever you bring it home, <clears throat> that if you're not going to cook it until tomorrow, that you put it on ice, you know, put it on a tray, um, put ice on the bottom, put your fish down in a thin, in an even layer, put more ice on top of it every time, because our refrigerators, I believe, are around 38 degrees, um, and fish likes it to be 32 degrees, and oh. every day that it's a little bit, or every hour that it's not that it's a, a degree over that temperature, it decreases in val, it decreases in um, uh, quality. 
So it's something you make sure that keep diced down. When you're ready to prepare it, the biggest thing to know about fish is to make sure that you pat it dry really well, because if you don't and it's wet when you're going to salt and pepper it, it's going to be, um, it's going to be soggy um, and it's going to retain all that water. It's more like going to steam from the inside out and it's not, it's just going to be like mushy. Mm -hmm. So you always want to make sure you pat it dry and salt and pepper it really well or any other um, seasonings that you want to do. I find too that they cook whenever you're broiling or baking, um, that they cook really nicely in when you use aluminum pans, you know, because it's just, um, it allows it to heat very quickly. Um, it's a good, you know, it, it, I think an even conduction of heat um, and it can cook fast and um, you could dump off any liquid that you need to do. But, um, you know, all of the ones that you named could be baked, broiled, um, even even walleye, we do eat walleye too. Oh, that's good. I haven't had that in a while. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's nice on the grill. That's probably one of my favorite freshwater fish. Mm -hmm. um, you no, know, um, I'm I haven't had in a long time. It, probably when I was a kid, trout and some of those other things. But um, I think walleye does really well on the grill. I think that's that could be dredged and floured and pan fried too. Is that mm -hmm. what you've done? That's how we usually do yeah. it. That is yeah. the one that I mean. We don't. We try not to eat a lot of fried. Right. Food. Um, but that is the one fish that we do fry. And that's the only recipe I have for walleye. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would have to look at some walleye recipes. I'm sure there's some good ones out there um, because it, it's a nicer texture fish too. Um, mm -hmm. and especially if you're not a fish person, you might like walleye too versus trout or some of the other ones. Yeah. We're not trout fans. No, me either. And even like the pan fish. Um, I remember people in my family would get bluegills or those little ones and they're so oh. tiny you need like a million of them to yeah. make a meal <laughs> yeah I think those two were just lightly sauteed and, and eaten yeah. um, but as far as flounder I, sometimes I will dredge that in um, flour and salt and pepper it and then just saute it maybe on both sides for just a minute and then stick it into the oven to finish it and get a little bit crispy mm. um, I do that with flounder and yellow sole or um, lemon sole I like that one too. Um, How about tilapia? Tilapia is, I think you could do anything that you do with, with the flounder or the cod, you know, okay. grilled in the oven simply is nice with salt, pepper, you know, even garlic, even it's like a little, um, if you wanted to finish it with some breadcrumbs and butter at the end, um, just a, or olive oil would even be even better. A little bit of olive oil and breadcrumbs at the very end and, and just lightly broil it. That would be a nice one. Um, I think tilapia will lend itself to anything. And, okay. um, you know, to keep it healthy, um, there are some butter-based sauces that you could use, but to keep it healthy, I would stick with, you know, olive oil, lemon, um, those kind of things. Okay. And you could experiment with different, um, you know, putting, I think rosemary would be too strong, but um, I would probably stick with garlic. Um, dill's nice for, do you put dill on your salmon, some fresh dill? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a nice That's recipe really nice. for a dill sauce. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think I, that, that goes really well too. Um, and I've seen some with like a lemon in lemon dill. And then I've seen like some, like a, rem, a cold remoulade that you could put on the side, you know, which is really nice. Um, but again, those could be, you know, caloric but some of those could be made with either olive oil or avocado oil. And let's see. And I think too, I mean, I think you could even like, I, when I make fish tacos, I usually use the cod. Um, I have done it with swordfish, you know, just cutting it up in cubes and broiling it, you know, dredging it and broil it. Sometimes that dredging in flour makes that nice little coating on the end and keeps it, I don't know, a little bit crispy. Um, mm -hmm without adding too many calories. And I think that's a good choice. Um, and, you know, with that, I like to do like a mango salsa, like the, I think we made one of those mango salsas. That's very nice with some- That salsa. mango salsa was unbelievable. So we were good. all so, so skeptical about that. And yes. we just all were yeah. loving it. Yeah. Oh. So simple and so good. Yes. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know what, now that we're talking about, I think cilantro is something really nice to put on, you know, depending what you're having. I think yeah. that's a good 
thing to chop up and put on with a little bit of um, olive oil. And there's one thing too, whenever um, like I make a whole snapper on the grill or some of those, there's other fishes that we make whole on the grill. Um, I will make like a half olive oil, half lemon juice, and even dice up some really, really fine red pepper, um, red onion, purple onion in there too, okay. and some parsley and um, baste it with that. That's really nice. And then even like as I'm putting it on the tray, you know, even put a little bit over then to have um, people like to put it right onto their fish at that time. That's really nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. But yeah, all those are, are good ways to do or fish. And you're right. And the thing about fish is, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but my family, you know, people are getting home at different times. Sometimes we usually yeah. try to eat together. Um, but if it's a night where somebody's not going to be home, I hate making it because it doesn't heat up well or reheat well. <laughs> it's not that exciting, you know, right. um, or comforting sometimes. But I think it, it's a nice light dinner and you feel so good when you eat it. Uh -huh. You feel so right like you did something good right. for your body yeah you feel so light and like oh, you're not stuffed and right. um, different feeling than eating but like if you really, yeah yeah versus eating red meat you have that like a little bit of a, a heavy feeling you know um I think fish is just so great for that and mm -hmm. um you know and I think it's a good goal for you to have you know a couple times a week too like the Mediterranean diet you know a good two to three times a week and um you know high in omega-3s, good lean protein, and then, you know, chicken sometimes, vegetarian sometimes. I think that's really good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, how, what is your approach to meal planning now? Well, um, I find that it varies from week to week based on what the schedule looks like. Yes. But when I sit down and meal plan ahead of time and ensure that everything is in the house, it is utterly amazing how easy how quick, how much money I save. Um, I'm amazed. And so why I don't do that every week, <laughs> I'm not right. sure. Right. But sometimes it gets away from me. And then the worst thing is, you know, it's 2.30 or 3 in the afternoon and everybody will start saying, oh, what are we having for dinner tonight? And I have no idea. Oh, um, I know. And then you're either scrambling or like you said, do the bad thing, which is take out. Right. Um, and so... Yeah, it's, it's really, it's like finding new things, having variety, that's kind of the challenge. Because right. you do kind of get in a rut with the things that, you know, have worked in the past. And then eventually it's like, I I'm tired of all this. I want something new. Mm -hmm. I know. I agree with you. Um, I know sometimes you have to get out of your, it's not a comfort zone, but like you said, to try some new things. And I had somebody approach me about this software for my, um, for my clinical business. Oh, you could generate seven, you could generate a meal plan for somebody, gives them seven recipes. And I'm like, this isn't going to work. Nobody wants to try. No woman that I know wants to try seven brand new recipes in one week. You know, right. That would be, I would pull out my, because you would have yeah. to really sit there and, you know, you have to read them and go through them and, and make sure you have all the ingredients and everything like that. I'm like, I think at best try one new recipe a week. If you mm -hmm. like it, then it gets into the rotation. That week that you said that went really well and smoothly for you, save that week, save that shopping list, you know, right. and then, you know, get them. I put them on my calendar. Um, and then I usually, uh, you know, have a, a shopping list that goes with that. So I don't have to keep thinking, like, you know, in times when you're really busy, it's like you said, it makes everything, it makes life so much more smoother to know that you have, there might be a lot of chaos out there, but I know what I'm having for dinner tonight. Right. You know, it gives you a in the house. Of, and it yeah. is, yes. Mm -hmm. And nobody has to run to like um, the local store for like a missing ingredient, which, you know, that could really um, increase your cost too. You know, mm -hmm. when you have to, when you don't have all your ingredients and you go to, we have a couple local stores around us. Not that they're, I mean, I can't blame them. They have to have, that's where they have to have their prices mm -hmm. um, versus our grocery store. Cause it's a convenience but um, it is nice to, um, to have everything on hand and not have to worry about it. And, mm -hmm. um, and two, when you stick to the lit, you're right. You save so much money just by sticking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that too, when, when my kids were little, not taking them to the store really helped to save money, <laughs> you know, because they if see I everything. Take my <laughs> husband to the store, I save money. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I bet. I know. One thing that's been a big hit at our house and I haven't done it for a long time. So it's definitely going to make the list in the next week. Um, 
I know when, when everybody's home, I know the toppings that they all like on pizzas. Yes. And we'll have like an MTO pizza night where everybody makes their own with exactly what they like on it. And everyone's always so happy. I know. And I love that idea too. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that. That's a great night. We do that too. And then you're kind of doing it together. So yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did that a lot when the kids were little. Um, making yeah. your own pizza. I think that's a lot of fun. Now, do you, well, how do you, what do you do with your crust? Do you make a crust? Do you buy a crust? I have found, um, I wish I knew the brand. I can't think of it right now, but it's kind of a, a cross between a flatbread okay. and, and a New York style thin. And they're mm -hmm. rectangular in shape. And you get like four nice slices out of okay. one. Oh, that's uh, nice. Yeah. And I'll just pick, I think they come free in a package. Okay. Um, and, and I have made the crust on occasion, but usually for convenience, it's easier oh, to yeah. have the shells. I agree with you. I mm -hmm. agree. Uh, we have a local grocery store, a real small uh, family one, and they sell pizza there, but they also sell their own dough. And mm. when you're talking about budget, I think it's a dollar or two dollars for this dough. And it's so delicious. Mm -hmm. um, so I do that sometimes too. Every once in a while, we'll make it our, ourselves. Um, mm -hmm. Thing fun to do, but um, it does take, it is a process and it has right. to you know, beating it down and everything is a letting it rise and making sure everything, cause I'm, um, you know, and that's something too, making sure you have fresh yeast on hand and, and all of those things. Yeah. So, is easier sometimes it is more economical just to um buy the dough like that versus and speaking you know. of yeast the other thing that i got into well i guess it was um right after our son was diagnosed and you know our life was d different instantly um i started making bread in a bread machine yes. and you know again i felt like you're not buying bread with all these preservatives. And um, I don't know if it's cheaper to make it or not, but it certainly is tasty. I bet. And it kind of felt special, you know, having fresh warm bread. Yes. Yes. And so, yeah. I do that more in the winter than the okay. summer, you know, yeah. with heavier meals. But um. and did you say that you use the bread machine? Uh huh. Yeah. That, th that's I absolutely huge. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Yes. Because that's something that um, if you're doing it by hand, that's definitely a, a skill. And it's... Oh, yeah. And I don't possess that skill. So. Yeah. I'm not um, that great at that either. I mean, but, it's, you know, two minutes to throw the ingredients in the machine and it comes out with a beautiful loaf of bread. That's really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you feel like you're doing something good, not mm -hmm. doesn't have all the funny business in it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you do a lot from scratch. Pardon me? Do you do mostly scratch? Like is most of your foods from scratch, little convenience foods, few convenience foods? Yeah, I don't buy a lot of processed. Good. And so, um, you know, that's definitely more work in the kitchen. Yes. Um, but uh, that's just how we've always been. So same, same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, I guess, you know, probably because my parents did, you know, we didn't have. It must too be. Much. Yeah. And, um, you know, my grandfather made his bread, like you're saying, all the time, um, not from a bread machine. He was just skilled at it. <laughs> but yeah. I, that's something that I didn't get. That's um, definitely the cooking side I did, but not not the bread making. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it's so worth it to put something out for your family, you know, that you prepared. And, you know, I don't know, there's a lot, I just take a lot of pride in that, what I've done right. them. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a garden, Deb? We don't. Um, well, I guess I shouldn't say that. We're experimenting this year with um, pepper plants in pots. Okay, excellent. Um, and they look like they are extremely happy. So we're super excited that we're going to have some nice peppers. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. fantastic. Do you go to any farmer's markets or anything? Where I live, we are very close to Amish country. Yes. So we have all the stands along the roadsides all summer long. And, you know, they have everything from blueberries to things into the fall. So oh, that's wonderful. I, I have lots of access to, to fresh fruit, fruits and vegetables. 
Great. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's like the best part of it. And I think it, I would assume that that's organic. Oh, I would think so too. It's probably not certified organic, but you know, there's a cost involved there. Um, Mm -hmm. Just even like uh, when we were um, buying, my husband starts a lot of our things from seeds for our garden, but um, we do buy a few plants and some of them, um, one place in town, they, there was like a certified organic and then there's one that's, they're not certified, but you know, it's all for lack of better word, you know, using some of, you know, the pesticides and anything else, I guess that the organic people do not use, but they just didn't have that certification. So, um, yeah, I would say that what you're getting from the Amish is very good. Mm -hmm. So that's really nice that you have that close to you. That's the best part of, there is a, um, probably about 10 minutes, like away from me in the next town, they have, a farmer's market every Saturday. And now there is a peach truck that I guess comes from Chambersburg. Oh, uh, once no. a week. oh, I missed that memo. I didn't get the memo and you had to sign up for it. Like whether oh, you want yes. like a bushel or a peck or something like that. So um, that's, that's, I love those peaches when, they, when oh, you get them. They're, at the the peach, best. they're like candy. I mean, yes. so. We, um, it, and it's such, I think it's about a two week period that they're yes. around here. There's oh. one Amish farm that gets them. From okay. Chambersburg. Yeah. And um, yeah, they sell out in a matter of hours. Right. right. So, yeah. There's um, there's a farm near us where you could pick your own. And we've done that, like, you know, pick a bushel full and then we come home and, you know, some will eat, but some will peel, make a pie. Some will freeze to make a pie later. Yeah. Uh, and then the last two years, we've missed the window. It's just, it's like they'll say peach picking this weekend and then that's it. Right. Yeah. Because it it's a very yeah. small window, but boy, is it delicious. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I guess those, I guess those are a little temperamental. I don't know, you know, if it's, if it's too rainy or if it's too dry, right. I guess that really affects the crop. So, mm-hmm. you know, and like right now too, they're saying, um, you know, talking about what, what you're saying about buying the chicken, they're saying to expect shortages, I think in chicken and beef again, coming up. And it's not so much a shortage in the product, but the labor. So, um, you know, it's good that you're buying extra, you know, yeah. and won't be forced to pay that price that they're going to mm-hmm. be charged. Mm-hmm. It's good to have a freezer, but you have to make sure you use it. Too. Yeah, because you can buy things and then you forget that you have them and they're, yeah. make it to the bottom and, you know, it's right. never gets used or gets really old. I have a question. Um, do you have, um, or do you work much with wild game or have? Um, as far as preparing it? Yes. Uh, the only wild game that we have is venison. Um, I have not done much with elk or bear. Okay. Um, I have had, um, I did prepare um, boar, um, but that was, that was about it. Why, what do you have? Well, um, my son was taken on one of those hunt of a lifetime experiences and he uh, shot an elk. Oh, wow. And so they sent us home with all of that meat. Okay. Which was overwhelming. You know, I'm sure. we, we've given a lot of it away, but we still have much. Right. And um, they did, they gave us a lot of ground mm-hmm. and... I don't, I mean, I've used it in a few things. Some things are better than others. Um, I don't know. Do, does it mix well with anything to sort of give it a little? Oops. I would say, I would say it's very lean, like venison. So yeah. you might want to mix it with pork or brisket. Okay. Um, and a lot of times they'll sell the brisket. Do you have, do you, um, they'll grind it for you too. If you, if you don't have a grinder at home, um, I have an attachment on my KitchenAid mixer that lets me grind. Like, if, like when you're saying about not using things, we buy a cow every year. And sometimes I like the next delivery will be coming and I don't have um, some chuck roast or, or there's something I didn't eat. So I'll grind that up and make hamburgers or something. That's why oh, I have okay. a grinder. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I think you could add brisket to that. You could probably add pork to it. It's gonna be lean. So you're gonna wanna use some moist cooking methods um, you might try marinating it. Um, 
you know, before you cook it, like if you're going to, if it's like, if you have any like steaks, you might want to try marinating them first. Don't overcook I, it. I have done um, some of the steaks in like a flank steak marinade. Oh. And they have been incredible. I am so amazed at how much it absorbs the marinade more so than really? beef. Yes. Okay. They've wow. been fantastic, but I've been struggling with the ground. Yeah. The ground I would probably might try to mix with um, brisket or like a higher fat, um, either beef or pork. And, you know, I would just use it like you make anything else, you know, okay. chili uh, might go over really well. Um, meatloaf, you would have to have a little bit more of the other meats because that could tend to get dry. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the hamburger would work out really well with brisket. Um, what are other some ground beef things? Oh, tacos. Tacos, yeah. Um, Sloppy Joe's. Yeah. Yeah, and then tacos, nachos. <laughs> mm hmm mm hmm but yeah, like as far as like in a stuffed pepper or a stuffed cabbage or anything, you know, that's, that might get, that can tend to get dry, I would think. Yeah. You know, without that other. Um, yeah, but I would make sure you see, like you said, that flank steak marinade, you know what, that was probably really good too, because um, what all was in it? Is it um, something you make at home? Yes. Um, it's honey, soy, ginger, garlic little bit of oil. Yeah. Um, and, and you could just yeah. see it turning color very quickly, you know, just taking on I bet it soaked marinade. up that soy like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It was an absolutely delicious. Pro Actually, I, I think it was good. better than flank steak. <laughs> really? Oh, yes. wow. Flank yeah. steak's a hit at my house. <laughs> yeah, we like it too, um, but this was that amazing. Sounds, yeah. That sounds really good. And I would think too, that that soy really helped to break down some of that connective tissue. Um, and what else I wanted to say is, what about, does he like beef jerky, your son? We've done some jerky with it. And well, it's I was gonna been say delicious. My son likes to do that with the venison. Yeah, yes. we have a dehydrator and we tried some of that and it was really good. We were actually thinking about using some of the ground for that because we have um, oh, really yeah to make sort of like those flat sticks you have to put mm -hmm. it through I forget oh, that's what a good idea. yeah we haven't done it yet but we are going to try it oh that sounds really good mm -hmm. that sounds really good yeah because I know that's something you know that's popular right now everybody likes the jerky mm -hmm. um and that's a good high protein snack too it is you know and you have control of it it's not like at the store when it's there's nitrates and nitrites added right you you know you're adding your there's a lot of nice things that you could do you know mm -hmm. homemade yeah that's a good idea well believe me we have a freezer full <laughs> <laughs> really yeah was it a big one where did he go was it Colorado no, actually, it was Tennessee. Um, really? Yeah, it was beautiful. We went in November. Um, oh, wow. And I think the animal was over 700 pounds. So oh my gosh, I can't we, even. We came up with a lot of meat. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so it was fresh meat, right? Didn't they pack it in a cooler, then you come home and throw it in your freezer? Yeah, actually, we brought coolers um, in case, okay. and they butchered it and vacuum sealed everything. And we had <laughs> we had a vehicle full of coolers stuffed with meat. <laughs> oh, that is and, so yeah, funny! We froze it. We that froze it so after funny. we got home. So, yeah. Oh wow, that sounds like a lot of fun, though. What a, yeah. what an experience it was, and it's really so nice was. that. You know, not only those memories, and now you have the meat to have too. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm getting to the point of being concerned about using it all. Yes. Um, so it's already been a number of months. Yeah. I would say it's a good, you know, probably nine months. Okay. You know? Maybe even a year. If it's, if you, if they, vacuum sealed and it's really nice and you have a good freezer you have to be careful of those self-defrosting freezers um mm -hmm. because the temperature will come down and then go back up but still i it should still be okay 
And if you open it, Deb, and you see some freezer burn, just cut the freezer burn off because right. that'll make everything else taste funny or cut mm -hmm. off. I don't know if there's any visible fat. Sometimes that, that yucky flavor gets into the fat. Um, that happens mm -hmm. with beef a lot or lamb. And if you cut that off, it'll usually be, or, or even pork, it'll be okay. Looks like okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Um, well, that'll be maybe, I guess you have to cook some. Well, the good thing about that too, is it's not red meat. You know what I mean? It's very lean. So you don't have to feel bad about eating it. You know what I right. mean? Mm -hmm. Including it in your diet. That's very lean and very, you know, I'm sure it's, I'm sure that's kind of considered organic too. I think it is. You I know, think it is. Yeah. Grass I, I have found, you know, like with the larger pieces, um, I, I've tried to do some like kebab things. Yes. With it, and um, I just, I don't worry too much about the wastage. I mean, there's so much meat. I'd rather right. get that, I don't know what it's called, sinew or yes. whatever um, yeah. out of it because you cannot eat that. Oh, no. No, you're right. Yes. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're exactly right. I don't. So I spend a lot of time cutting and, you know, making right. sure that we're just eating the quality pieces. So. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I look forward to that um, salmon patty recipe. Okay. I will get it out there today. Good. Good. And if you have any questions, you always reach out to me. Okay. Okay. All right. Stay well and I'll see you soon. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Take care, Deb. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.